No, 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 I mean, if you need it for more time. Otherwise, you can call me. You can call me. You can call me. No, no, I can do it. No, no. Yeah, it says just to see if they need it. Get it. I don't mind. No, no. I'll do it. I'll do it.
Um, so welcome everyone today to this um, beautiful celebration um, in which Santi and Margaret will give each other in love um, in the sacrament of marriage. Um, this, in these readings today we will hear about this love, this love that trusts and perseveres. Um, this love that is only possible because of God um, and through God. Um, and it's very clear and we are witnesses today that this um, that Santi and Margaret, both of them, um, are here today, and we're all here today, um, celebrating their marriage because they trusted um, in the providence of God. Um, so I invite you to rejoice, to um, take part in the celebration. So let's welcome the presence.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. So we hear all this together for this special occasion. So I invite you all to, in this spring time, to leave a moment of happiness and joy, a reason to celebrate. There's been much suffering, much depression, much confusion, and so the Lord gives us really this chance to, to celebrate today. So I invite you to participate however you can, reflecting on what you hear and what you see. It's be great to us to gather here in this church of St. Lives. We've come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration of brothers and sisters. And now we stand in Santiago de Mayo on the day they intend to form our home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us attentively give them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then in the Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God and Father through Christ the Lord, who is humble his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one.
reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate. So from the soil, the Lord God fashioned all the wild beasts and all the birds of heaven. These he brought to man to see what we would call them. Each one was to bear the name that a man would give it. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of heaven, and to all the wild beasts. But no wild beast to all was found to be him. So the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and he closed it in his flesh. The Lord God built the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. The man exclaimed, This at last is bone from my bones and flesh from my flesh. This is to be called woman, for this was taken from man. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and joins himself to his wife, and they become one body. Now both of them were naked, the man and his wife, but they felt no shame in front of each other. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, 
as a previous viewer has also some his experience out fishing, never found a fish which could really satisfy him. Because they're never big enough, never beautiful enough. You always want something more. And so he was unsatisfied with his life. So we know that nature in itself cannot really fulfill any human being. There's so much in this world which is really so amazing, fascinating, beautiful, but nothing like this amazing work of creation which God in his imagination creates. And so when God is busy creating, Adam is sleeping. So while perhaps Sante was busy sleeping in his life, not really thinking too much about the future, there comes a moment where God is busy. The man wakes up to himself and voila, there she is. We don't know if there's some pain in his side, and we don't know if that would count his ribs, and we don't really understand until today why did God take a rib from the side of Adam to create woman? Lots of people, 2,000 years more of Christianity, another 2,000 years of a Jewish tradition, and somehow we aren't convinced as yet. But if we know the fact that Adam is asleep, is unsatisfied, he wakes up and he knows immediately this is it. All is ready for him. And here the woman also, she discovers that she has a purpose to, she has a mission. And here is a, perhaps a difficult aspect of the first reading, repeated also in the Gospel. And it says, this is why a man, that's you, Sanji, a man leaves his father and his mother and cleaves to his wife. Now you are to become one flesh with her. So, mom and dad, he can uncleave us. You have to help also your son to be obedient to his work, to encourage him. Stay with your wife. I don't know the cooking skills as yet, the capacity to, uh, to, to run a household. I presume she'll grow with experience, but you know, this is why a man needs to leave, to be fulfilled, to find his companion. But we cannot be alone. And we know it's also not by chance here we have a number of presbyteries, priests, who also we found a God has given us a call, but also we too cannot live alone. We need to have our spouse of the church in Jesus Christ. As each one of us, we, none of us have been created to live alone. And it's much more than just living physically in the same house as someone else. As we know, it can also be a pretty bad experience too. So it's something much greater, which St. Paul really has understood. He's talking in this hymn of charity that love is the way to holiness and to salvation. So it's nothing to do with selfish desires or physical passion and possession, as we know is always a big temptation from our part, especially from the male's part, and it's a, a battle which needs to take on to allow complete freedom. And this love, St. Paul has experienced, is really, it's a love which begins from God. It's not just 
our human efforts trying to love, trying to appreciate, trying to accept. It's not just the affections, we know it's something much greater. It's even sacrificial, which means that we begin to, to sacrifice, to give. And this would be a wonderful experience of both Margaret and Santiago as he entered this gift of his sacrament of marriage. We need to be able to, to give for the other. Here it says, patient. And so, we we'll almost substitute this for a Christian spouse is patient, kind, never jealous, never boastful, never arrogant or rude. Never insists on her own way, never irritable or resentful, doesn't rejoice when the husband makes a mistake. You see, I was right, you should have gone the other way. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. It's a, an enormous opening for horizons of Billy Grant. And so we know that the married couple have an enormous mission in this world. But also we know that there are, there are certain enemies in this world. And so this gospel speaks of these Pharisees. Very clever, very intelligent, very pious. They know the religion so well. But as happens, here they are testing Jesus with his question. But can't we try again to divorce and to remarry? The problem is not so much even today, it's not of divorce. It's when we are not convinced that God is able to change our heart, allowing us to forgive and to love. When Adam was in the Garden of Eden. He wasn't looking around to see all the possible choices. There's only one. Uh, as in Santi's case, we believe, it wasn't a matter of choosing. This was a choice, something written in heaven by God Himself. And so there remains no doubt. Maybe not really, he even made them from the beginning. Made them male and female. So that the two are no longer one, are no longer two, but one flesh. Yeah. This is an enormous gift the Lord offers to the two of you here this afternoon as you embark on this new adventure, as you welcome this gift of his sacrament of, of matrimony, the gift of, of marriage, which the Lord from eternity has organized. And so we are witnesses. Some of you have perhaps been more instruments than others in this happening and taking place for two of them meeting one another. So I invite all of you really rejoice. You may have much sadness in your life, difficulties in your own relationships. But remember that life is very short. We need to get on with our life. Let us hope, we you know, that marriage is one of the best images we have of what heaven is like. And so this grand banquet and feast won't be limited to 150 guests. We won't have a poor family of Margaret, Colin, and Monica and the siblings. We assume that we are live broadcasting to them. They won't be stuck in Melbourne or Perth or Queensland or where else. The family and friends back in Spain may be. It will be open. We won't be cheated economically. Won't, be, won't even have to pay for it. It will be such a, a gift, such a, a treasure. Let's really ask the Lord really that He may help us today. I invite you. Be happy, rejoice, and let us celebrate together. So now we have the actual right to be quite brief. So I invite you to be attentive and participate as well as we can.
Santiago, and Margaret. You've come together in the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with the sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of a church, I ask you to state your intentions. So, Santiago and Margaret, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honour each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and His Church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and His Church. I, Santiago, take you, Margaret, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and honor you all the days of my life. I, Margaret, take you, Santiago, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who joined together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless in Christ the consent you have declared before the church, so that what God joins together, no one may put asunder. Santiago and Margaret, you are now husband and wife. May the Lord bless these rings which you have given each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Margaret, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Santiago, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Stand for the universal prayers of the Bible. And we get them to come up. Dear brothers and sisters, as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our brother Santiago and our sister Mary, let us commend them to the Lord. Let us pray for Margaret and Santiago. 
May God watch over them at every moment and grant them the rich blessings of health and happiness. May their love grow stronger each new day and may their home be filled with love and peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for Margaret's and Santiago's parents, families and friends. We pray for those not able to be present here with us today. May they continue to help, support and love them in the years that lay ahead. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for married couples here today and everywhere that their lives will be an example to the world of unity, fidelity and love. Lord, hear us. We pray today for peace in our world, which is troubled in different areas by war and conflict and the consequence of the pandemic. Help and guide all our civil leaders to listen to the utterance of the Holy Spirit in their decision making. Lord, hear us. We pray for the faithful departed and especially for those whom we ourselves have loved that God will one day unite us again in the joys of our eternal home. Lord, hear us. Graciously pour out upon his husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. May they offer one another a sign of peace.
on the occasion of his sealing of a sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
be holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And with his eyes raised to heaven to you, Father, Father, giving you thanks for all to his disciples say, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Supper was ended, he took the chalice, and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, Father, Father, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins to be in memory of me. Joseph, the spouse, 
with the blessed of the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may perish to be poets to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your soul. Jesus Christ. And we give and we give, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours forever and ever. La única bendición que no fue abolida, 
ni por la pena del pecado original, ni por el castigo del diluvio. Mira con bondad a estos hijos tuyos, que vino el matrimonio y del ser fortalecidos con su bendición envía sobre ellos la gracia del Espíritu Santo para que tu amor derramado en sus corazones los haga
to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. By the power we sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favour what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished you for one bread and a one chalice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We know that it's not only a sacrament of the church, but also for the world it has a special significance. And so also now we have the, the sign of a registry as a sign that this is not just something religious, this is something uh, for the world, a big sign for the world.
for the exit procession when the first of the priests would go out and the husband and wife, some of the cantors at least, and then the family and the assembly, and you can see what situation is outside of the dance fair or whatnot. Let us that. I think the family is just want to take a family photo and the front here before we go out. I'd suggest you do it. The family should just come up for a photo here before we go out. Thank you. 